Welcome to the International Association of Healing Ministries Presence 2020 online. Normally, we should be with my very good friend Rodriguez Pereira in Porto, Portugal, where we ran the indoor stadium, expecting thousands of people as the Lord is moving such in a powerful way in the south of Europe. And by the way, not only in the south of Europe, but most of the places in Europe and around the world, because this is God's time for the harvest. I want to welcome all of you who are just joining us. Um, I want to encourage you to be sure to register and go to the website. It's a free registration, healing-ministries.org, where you're gonna have not only the list of the speakers, but the bios, the link, free materials regarding healing, also, that you have to know, we've started this healing conference Wednesday morning, 7 a.m. Swiss time, and it was running like 16 hours a day with teaching, with revelation, preaching, ministering, but also worship. And some amazing worship leaders, they wrote just for this season some healing song, brand new healing song. And it's powerful. If you go to look at that, I'm sure you're going to be blessed, not only for your own life, but also for your nation where you are living in. So be sure to register to healing-ministries.org. Also, if you are speaking other languages, we have at the same time 10 other languages where you can have translation in Mandarin, in, in uh, Portuguese, in Spanish, in French, Francais pour ceux qui parlent Francais, in, Port in uh, Dutch, and different other languages as well, having a special prayer individual prayer where hundreds of prayer team are waiting to pray for you. So we are very excited for what we have experienced uh, during this last day. We re still receive testimonies from what God has done since the beginning. And if you have been touched or you're going to be touched, uh, please, you need to give God's glory by writing the testimony. You can go to the chat or to the website. Uh, uh, and then you're going to receive free, a free booklet, How to Keep Your Healing. But we have so many powerful healing that we receive. Let me read you just for some of them. Uh, one of the ladies, she was at the hospital suffering there since many weeks. Uh, and the power of God touched her and she immediately got healed and she left the hospital. Isn't it beautiful? And so many others, uh, tumor disappears, many legs uh, get touched, the hips uh, get touched also. Um, let me go because there is so many things I need to connect to the right things also. Uh, also some people from Russia, they testify that uh, the lady had the growth in the breast. Uh, the morning, all the growth disappear. Um, uh, also wonderful testimony, somebody had a, an accident uh, and a piece of metal entered the hands uh, and the person get instantly healed, the bleed stop, she stopped to bleed, the skin came normal and even the metallic piece disappear. So why I'm sharing that is just to tell you that God is alive, Jesus is alive uh, and he is a God who is willing to do miracles and healing today. Today, it's really a great joy for me to invite some precious friends who are very anointed to use in the healing ministry worldwide. And I want to welcome first Dennis Balcom from Hong Kong, who is one of the greatest missionary that I know. He will share about his life, his passion about the Holy Spirit and about healing. So welcome, Dennis. I want to welcome my very good friend who is actually part of the same family today. It's Peter Vence from Stuttgart. He's the senior pastor of Gospel Forum, one of my favorite church in Europe, moving in the power, praying for the sick in every service and uh, having a heart also for the mission. Uh, I know the budget or the, 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 the amount of money they pour out to the mission field is just amazing. So I want to bless Peter and welcome you. I'm so glad to have today my friend Rodriguez Pereira, who is from Portugal. He was the former coach of Benfica, the soccer team. And the Lord called him, saved him, and today is a full-time missionary pastor, full of the Holy Ghost, preaching the gospel, praying for the sick, and actually is the director of IHM from Portugal. I want to welcome as well 
as well Caleb Verley. Caleb Verley is from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and he is the CEO of Empower 21. Caleb is full of the fire and is part of this organization that maybe we'll share a little bit uh, and where I'm part as well and Ben is part as well of Empower 21. The goal is that before 2033, every human being on this planet may have an encounter of Jesus through the presence and the power of the Holy Ghost. What a beautiful vision and a privilege to have you here, Caleb. And we love you, love your family. It's my great joy to welcome also Ben Fitzgerald, which I honor so much. He's from Australia, but the Lord sent him as a missionary in Europe to join us to bring the harvest in. He is the senior leader of Awakening Europe. He's part of the core team of Europe Shall Be Saved, in charge of all the evangelist uh, ground troop. And we love him, Ben, so much. He's, he's one of the guys that I'm traveling the most. We have fun together, but we see also God's power moving and touching the multitude, not only in the third world countries, but also in the West, like in Europe, in Australia, or in America. So today, whatever you are, wherever you are coming from, expect your miracle for yourself. And the last one, which is a very good friend since many years that I have a high respect for him, is Dr. John Bonici. He is a brother, a Catholic brother, working in the hospital as a surgeon, as a medical doctor in a clinic. And at the same time, on the evening, like every month, they have miracles and healing service in the front of the cathedral of Valletta. And then he goes to the different villages. And God is using him in such in a powerful way as he had an encounter years ago with Catherine Kuhlman. So when he's preaching, you can feel the atmosphere that Catherine Kuhlman was carrying. So my friend, I want really to welcome you. We're going to have some uh, questions and answer but the most important thing is that if you are watching we want we pray that God may touch you and actually I pray for that I pray for the viewers uh, that everybody that are sick they can f get recover because the Bible says through the stripes of Jesus there is healing but not only you can heal them but you can come with the power of the Holy Spirit over every viewers uh, that God can use them to bring the gospel to their families and to their regions and to the mission field in Jesus name and now it's my great joy to introduce my son who is my son-in-law who married my daughter a few years ago he was an intern and then he discovered my family and the beautiful blonde girl and I'm glad it shows her and now is my son part of the family and they're gonna give me the second grandchild very soon so I'm very excited and Jeremy will lead this time so welcome Jeremy and Thank thanks you. so much. Thank you so much I just want to say that I I've learned so much from Jean-Luc, and I think uh, a lot of us, we learned so much from him. Uh, Thank you. Said you're such so a, a mentor and a father. Thank you. It's a joy to, to be with you, uh, all of you, and, uh, and uh, just to, to, to take this time to ask you a question. And, and I want to start with, uh, with you, Dennis. Uh, you, you have been a missionary in Hong Kong for, for six, uh, 50 years, and, uh, and uh, we, we just checked, and we had people from over 82 nations that watched uh, uh, the, the, the streaming um, the last days and uh, for this conference. And I know there's people watching us. They have a calling to be missionaries like you. And uh, I wanted to ask you, um, how, how did you receive this calling? And, and also, can you pray for the people that are watching and that are called for the missions? We know it's a time uh, to, for, for the people to go to the nation to preach the gospel. So could you, could you share about, about your calling and to release that over the people and release the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit over them? Are you speaking to me? Yes. Okay. Well, I've been working in China for 51 years and we've seen a tremendous revival. The church has grown to maybe a hundred million believers. And I've asked thousands of people in China, literally thousands, why did you become a Christian? They said, because of signs and wonders and miracles that Hallelujah. I've seen. Now it's not just uh, healing miracles, there's many miracles. There's one scripture you know very well is in Hebrews chapter Two and verse four that uh, that the gospel was preached, 
and witnessed by the Lord God, bear witness with signs and wonders and device miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Now, what I want to pray for you that you will not only be healed, but that you will receive the gift of healing. Now, that's so very important. When I went to Henan in, uh, back in 1982, uh, there was a great revival at that time. And people were seeing miracles because they were praying. They were fasting. They were seeking God. But then the Lord allowed me to teach on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and lay hands on the people. And I saw hundreds or thousands of these servants of the Lord baptized in the Holy Spirit. And not only did they speak in tongues, which is wonderful, but they received gifts of the Holy Spirit, like gifts of healing and uh, working in miracles. Now, when you see the greatest miracles are not in the church, so we believe that healing is the children's bread, but the greatest miracles are when you go out and preach the gospel to the lost. And this is what I hope this healing conference revival will really focus on is we need to bring in the harvest. Jesus is coming soon, Amen. but he said the gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all the nations as a witness to all people before the end comes. How can that be done? It needs to be done through the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want to pray for you right now. I know our time is very limited and there's a lot of speakers, but I want to pray for you that you will receive the gift of healing. Now, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 to covet the best gifts. You know, we're not supposed to covet other things, you know, money or fame, but we can covet the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you, if you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now, Hallelujah. speak in another language. By the way, in China, I've heard many times Chinese don't know a word of English, speak in perfect English. And I've heard foreigners don't know a word of Chinese, speak perfect Chinese. So it's not just some gibberish. It is the language. And I want you to receive that language. And I want you to ask the Lord Hallelujah. that you will receive gifts of healing and that you will go out and lay hands upon the sick and you will see miracles. Lord Jesus, I Hallelujah. pray you right now will pour of your Holy Spirit yes. upon all of these hungry oh, hearts, God, Lord, even God, 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 preachers God, God, God. And, and ministers and priests and servants of the Lord that haven't yet been baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. Amen. I pray for a mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire right now that they will receive other languages to pray and to intercede and to worship God and the Holy Spirit. And I release the gift of healing. Yes, I release Lord. the gifts of the Holy Spirit upon them, Lord, that they will go out and, as you said, they shall lay hands upon the sick yes, and Lord. they shall recover. And also give them great boldness that not to be afraid of people or even being persecuted or other religious believers that don't believe in Jesus, but to preach your word with boldness. Speak yes. the word and lay hands upon the sick and heal each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's so good. Thank you so much. Uh, ben, I was wondering, you, in the last years, you, you have been impacted Europe so much uh, through Awakening Europe and, uh, uh, and you're Australian. And uh, I wanted to ask you, how did you receive this vision for, for Awakening Europe? And, uh, and uh, what are also the, the, the most beautiful healings and, and th see, uh, things that you have seen uh, through those events? Yeah, when I came to Europe first, that was my actual first real trip to Germany. And I went to the fields where Hitler spoke, you know, and I've never seen all the Nazi history or anything like that. And I was honored. I was actually a pastor in Bethel at the time in America. And I was coming for a few trips to come and preach at a church and different places in, in uh, Europe. And the first time someone invited me to Nuremberg, Germany, and they said, let's go to the historic fields, you know, and I was there with my friend Todd White. We were both there doing the conference together. And so while I was there, actually, I had a mind's eye vision, not a vision where I saw it, but it was like it was in my mind. I could see everything playing out like a video in my mind. And I'd been praying a lot and fasting a lot before going there because I felt something significant was going to happen on that trip. And what I saw is actually very profound. I saw people from all different races of Europe, like darker skin, maybe, you know, Spanish or Puerto Rican looking, and uh, sorry, um, uh, Portuguese looking. And then I saw people with blonde hair, blue eyes, uh, you know, like look like Norwegian or Swedish. And this huge crowd in front of me in the field that Hitler spoke in. And, and as I saw it, they were all crying like this out to God. They were saying, God, take back Europe, take back Europe, take back Europe. And there were people from every nation 
of Europe. I knew there was Ukrainian people there as well. I could see these different faces. It was really weird, like I could see them. And I, I saw that a lot of them were young. Some were older though as well. There was a mixture. And so I said to my friend Todd, I said, Todd, I said, I think God wants to fill this place with people from all over Europe preaching the gospel where like Hitler was and he raised up a bad army. God will raise up a godly army. And so Todd said, I see the same thing. I have the same vision. And so we just begin to share that. We're kind of loud mouths, you know, me and Todd. So we just begin to say exactly what we what we feel sometimes. And uh, we share that vision. And God really spoke to me. He said, Ben, I want you to leave Europe, uh, leave America and move your life into the soil of Europe because there's a great harvest that's about to happen there. I'm only a little piece of the puzzle. It's the gospel that is in every Christian. And so when I saw those things happen in my spirit, I didn't think that it would necessarily happen the way it happened physically, that we'd go there a year later to Nuremberg, the very same city, and about 27,000 people would come, and mainly people from the German-speaking world, that the Lord would kind of reignite things inside the heart of the German people to really uh, have a love and a, and a heart for their own people. I love missions. We love to go to Philippines, other places, but there's something special that's happening in Europe right now where Europeans are getting a heart for their own European people. Amen. And so that's what I saw happen. And so I, I moved there and and to answer your question, what are the most powerful miracles I've seen? Well, I would say this. I would say in the healing anointing, there's also the healing, that there's the deliverance of demons. A lot of times Jesus said, you know, that this comes out, except not by prayer and fasting, you know, you can't get this demon out. And it was causing the boy sickness. And we have literally been in the stadiums and just put our hand out from the stage. This cannot be us. We're nowhere near the people. It has to be the authority of the name of Jesus. And we've said we command evil spirits to leave the lives of people. We have seen people with deafness in their ears since they were born like that, gone, completely open. Something was blocking their ear, completely blocking their ear their whole life. And they had some kind of rheumatoid conditions, things like this. As demons would leave, sometimes hundreds at a time in the stadium, you would hear them screaming and this kind of thing happening. But the Christians would start to pray for those people who are oppressed. And the, the demons would leave quickly. Hundreds of them leave within minutes. Yeah. And we'd see many, many miracles take place because of that. And probably my favorite one was a person who came to uh, the stadium in Nuremberg, actually. It was five years ago. And they came with a HIV diagnosis, AIDS. They have no way out, no way of being healed apart from God. They only have one option. It's a miracle or their life is headed into death. And uh, they came there and they said that in the worship, wasn't even when people were praying, in the mighty power of the presence of God, when he starts to rest on us, on a company of people, they said they felt this fire go through their body. And the Lord said to them, I've healed you of HIV. Now they told someone, I've been healed of HIV. How do you know you've been healed of AIDS? You have to check your blood. You've got to check everything. They went back and checked. They sent us an email one week later with the doctor's report. And the doctors were in shock. The AIDS was completely gone. One or two weeks later, they got some blood tests back and it was completely gone. And so uh, we've seen things like this happening all across Europe Hallelujah. where the Lord, by his sovereign power, is healing and doing miracles. And again, it's not the person, it's not me, it's not awakening. It's the name of Jesus that Amen. does the miracles, that Amen. casts out the demons. Amen. Amen. And so I'm excited to see every person watching use the power of the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, I still have a, a question for you. We know, we all know that we are in the, in the time of, a, of a, the coronavirus and that we cannot meet together. But my question is, why do you think it's still important to gather in those uh, events like that in stadiums? Well, I mean, you know, we wouldn't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire in Pentecost if they didn't gather in one place together while they were waiting. So I believe the Lord wants to call, you know, pour things out corporately on us together as a group. It was the most powerful corporate outpouring, the same with the 120 in Solomon's temple, the same in the very beginning, actually, when God began to speak and pour out his power on the children of Israel. There's a history of God working with the company of people as a group that is very important because God sees things as a family. He doesn't see you know, things as one sheep should be way over there, another over there. He sees us as a giant community. But however, in this time of the coronavirus, we can't get to each other physically, but we can certainly be like this in spirit, in heart. And just as Jean-Luc shared before, that many miracles have even happened this week in the conference by people watching a screen and the anointing hits them and they come out of hospital, they're delivered of sickness. So it's not that we need to, to be together because there's more power the Holy Spirit can move anywhere at any time. But I think when we come together as a corporate family, the Lord releases corporate things over the season of the church that we're in, in the world. 
and where we're supposed to go together in the world. Beautiful. We rejoice together again. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, Caleb, I, I have a yes. question for you. You, you work uh, a lot on helping uh, leaders from all around the globe to, to be united together, to reach every person on earth. And uh, what would you say to somebody that don't believe in the importance of unity between denomination to reach the nations? Well, you know, unity is such a powerful thing. The Bible talks about unity, and it also connects unity and working together with the blessing of God. Throughout Scripture, we see different ways that God blesses his people. We know the law in the early part of Genesis chapter 8, where it talks about as long as the earth remains, there'll be seed time and harvest. So there's a blessing that comes when we sow. We know that there is a blessing coming in the harvest in our future through what we do. But then there's a commanded blessing that comes when we work together in unity. The Bible says that, that the blessing when working together in unity is like the dew from Mount Hermon there in Israel, in the northern part of Israel, that flows down from the mountain and flows into the uh, Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is fresh. There's fish in it. It's a beautiful place. And it says that the commanded blessing is like when we flow together in unity, it's like that, that water flowing down from the mountain, flowing in to that beautiful place. You know, there's something powerful when we work together. We see it throughout scripture. When they came together in the upper room, they were in unity. And when they were in unity, there was a supernatural outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe that there are things that you can't do by yourself that you can only do together. And so that's why things like this are so powerful. As you see men and women from around the world gathering together, different ministry focuses, different daily jobs and different geographic regions, but serving the same God, empowered by the same Holy Spirit. And with that unity, there's a commanded blessing. And the blessing of God is, you know, is irrevocable. When God blesses you, God blesses something. It doesn't matter what demon in hell tries to come against you, what opposition you face, you're going to make it through that. And so there is power in unity. Amen. 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 Can you share with us uh, something that you've seen, uh, a breakthrough that you've seen or a miracles that you've seen by working uh, in unity? Yes. You know, I've recently been traveling, uh, you know, before this coronavirus uh, all the time, different countries and regions. And what's amazing is when you go into a region or a country and you're working with pastors and leaders, uh, there are usually different camps that people try to identify themselves by. I'm in this denomination or I'm from this background. But it's interesting when people come together at the end of the day, we're still people, we're still humans. And what I love is to see the unity and the walls that fall down when there's just a commonality. Sure, there are many things that we can choose to be divided around, but there is much more that we can choose to be united around. I remember when I was in the country of Brazil about two years ago before uh, their election, and the leaders were arguing, uh, Christian leaders, about different political stances, and they were, you know, divided in the nation, but then they came together, and they said, we're not going to be divided any longer. Let's unite, and let's work together, and there was such a sense of healing. I remember one meeting we were in. There's about 1,200 leaders across the, the stadium floor, and one of the pastors just got up, and he began to repent. He said, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't your brother. I, I didn't pray for you. I didn't believe in you. I didn't speak good of you. And he just started to repent there in the auditorium. And it was like a flow of the Spirit of God hit that place. And everyone in that place got on their knees and they began to repent and cry out to God. And there was a supernatural outpouring. This was one week before their election when everything was about to turn. They didn't know it was going to turn, but there was this this flow of repentance, and there was this flow of unity of the leaders. One week later, their entire government system changed as leadership changed, and it wasn't just accidental. It was supernatural, and as those leaders got together, and they repented, and as they bonded together, and they prayed in unity for their nation and for their people, now we know, we see the outpouring of God, the Holy Spirit moving. We see the 
unity there in that place. And I think it's just a sign that when we come together and we unify, the power of the Holy Spirit is the glue. He's the bond that connects us together because we can do so much more when we link arms than when we can by ourselves. Amen. 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 That's so good. Thank you. Rodriguez, we were supposed to be with you in Porto, and uh, we know God is moving so powerfully in the, in the south of Europe. So can you tell us what God is doing now uh, in, in Portugal and in, in the south of Europe? Oh, we are uh, experiencing amazing things here. It's incredible how God is moving in, in the south of Europe. Even with this whole crisis, no, this was in Europe one of the places more attacked by the coronavirus, like Spain, uh, Italy, uh, France, uh, and even Portugal have a, a little concern about this. But was the in these countries was the unique country who can connect better in this situation. But uh, I believe God is doing something incredible. That's the reason of the attack. Uh, I think the season God is preparing for, for us in, in the south of Europe is a revival. So he's trying to attack these, these nations, to block these nations to believe more. So uh, I see before of this, we have such events. We are starting to organize even these events. You know? We think in, in organize. We, we even have others prepared for 2021. And uh, I see... The devil trying to attack something in the south of Europe because always we receive a lot of prophecies. God want to move from the south to the north. Uh, always we receive that kind of prophecies, different people who come from different countries. So I believe the devil is making his work, trying to fight against the, the work of God. So. I think in this season we need to give our hands to believe more in Europe and to believe in a such revival from 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 the south and give the hands to all the Europe to see amazing things coming. And uh, in the last uh, years I see amazing things I never believe I will see. Even here in Portugal we start to see amazing miracles, things we don't see even in in Africa. I see here in in Portugal. So uh, what I believe is God is starting to make a, a movement and he allowed us to enter in a, in a desert. And in this desert, I think is the time to bring uh, healing. You remember in the desert was the first time they experienced with Moses, amazing healing. It was incredible what God did at that time. And uh, I believe this is a season for, for healing. And, uh, and I think God in will increase this will be an increase so strong, will come in a mighty way. Even in this season, I, I start to see amazing things here. In I don't know your experience, but even through internet, I start to see amazing healings through internet. Many lives we start to do. I start to see God making healings in everywhere, even through uh, live stream. It's incredible. So I think God is open a, a new door. Even the devil attacked and tried to, to put us all uh, alone, but uh, God is is making a new wave of healing, so natural. Uh, so I believe the, this is a new season, and is a new season of increase, and that's the reason of such attack we have in the world. E and now a uh, strong attack in the south of Europe. If you see uh, Spain, how many people died in Spain is is, is incredible. Even still locked in Spain. Uh, the same in Italy is incredible what the devil do in these nations. And I think it's time for us to instead to 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 stay in defense. I think God is allowing us to start to think to how to attack. So I think is a is a new season and uh, we are very excited even with this old situation. <laughs> we are very excited to creating different already creating different activities and programs we are initiating to believe in a in a mighty way. And also I see even this attack in many leaders in Europe. Uh, is incredible. I I see in Portugal and in different the south countries, but also in the in different places. Most of my friends I see start to be attacked from the devil. Uh, even people who move in healing and, and everything, 
who works now in Europe, I see that attack come so strong against the leadership. So I believe if that attack comes so strong, is because God is preparing something extraordinary like never we see before. So I believe we will see like uh, Moses, we will see amazing miracles like like a cross <laughs> or, or another way God will do <laughs> will be will be I'm expecting something extraordinary like Cindy Jacobs prophesied one time for for Europe and uh, I was in Jerusalem with her and she told me Rodriguez God is starting to making amazing miracles he will make the East Church known in Europe through miracles and miracles will be so strong they will create new, new organs uh, God will create creative uh, miracles will be a way never expected for the people and I think the best place God to do amazing things is here in Europe because right now people never be at three months no one need that because people think uh, the 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 system the national system uh, health care no problem we are okay now everyone want to us to pray i never received so many people in my lives in in instagram or something asking for healing is incredible uh, so i believe god is is putting that in the heart of the people they to see how god move and he move in our days that's what I feel. Amen. I would love if it's possible, Jeremy, that we can pray for Portugal. Mm -hmm. Because I know that many Portuguese are disappointed that we didn't have this presence conference this year on their place. Uh, they were so excited when we did the preparation the last year. Uh, like in Porto, most of the churches, they were together, even with the Catholic people. We went to visit the Catholic bishop. Uh, he was so open. We were able to pray together. It was really a breakthrough. And uh, also it was the first time in the north of Portugal we were able to do such a big event. Uh, so if you agree, my friends, uh, if we can just stretch the hands towards uh, the people of Portugal, uh, but also in the south, uh, we really believe it's God's time for the whole Europe and the nations of the, ro the, the world, not only Europe, uh, but especially the south of Europe. And we pray right now mm -hmm. for Portugal. Mm -hmm. We bless this country, Lord God. Mm -hmm. What you have started mm -hmm. to do, bless. it will not be stopped. And I pray, yes. Lord Amen. God, for Amen. a major Amen. breakthrough in this Let's country, yes. despite yes. this yes. coronavirus. Yes. We pray yes. for the leaders, yes. the yes. pastors, yes. the 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 different, the, even the business yes. people. Yes. We bless yes. them, Lord, yes. and we pray, yes. Lord, for an outpouring yes. of the Holy yes. Spirit yes. over Amen. this wonderful Amen. country Amen. of Portugal. Yes. As we pray yes. the same yes. for Spain, yes. Italy, yes. and France. Yes. Bring yes. the fire of revival yes. to this place in the name. Of Jesus, Amen. 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 John, John, you're also living in the south of Europe and you have seen God moving powerfully for, for, for 40 years. Uh, and you're also a medical doctor. Uh, and my question is, what's, what is the greatest miracles that you have seen in your practice? Well, I've seen so many, <laughs> so many. Um, but it's not only in the practice. I have seen many things happening in the practice too. But uh, one miracle, um, which is, I love seeing especially creative miracles. You know, we've had miracles also with the weather and miracles, all sorts of things. But one very fantastic creative miracle I saw was when I was in uh, in uh, um, uh, in Italy. In uh, in Anteniat is called. It was a place where we had a big healing service, and uh, I, I saw uh, an elderly couple coming in, and the, the lady had um, uh, crutches on, um, and she sat very close to the altar, about three foot. And you know how, what one feels when you, you would like to see these people healed quickly, no? Um, and we had three healing services because I, I went there for three days to give teachings, etc. Um, and and I asked God, God, please heal this lady. Um, I didn't know what she had, uh, but nothing happened. The next healing service, next night, she was there. I asked the Lord, Lord, this time nothing happened. The third healing service, uh, the last healing service, all of a sudden the Lord told me now, 
point at the, at the lady and I pointed my finger at the lady and I told my friend, um, uh, go now and lay your hands on her. And this lady stood up without crutches and started dancing and running all over the place, you know. Um, then she gave her testimony. She said she had gone to change her hip, she had a, a hip replacement. And she said the doctor made a mess of her um, and she had two operations and still was very, very bad. And this lady was completely healed. Mm. The beautiful thing was that after she, she, she went to her orthopedic surgeon, she, he, he told her, um, uh, Madam, what did you do? She said, um, I went to pray. And this doctor said, do you know, you've got a new hip joint. No? God created a new hip joint. Uh, uh, he does these things, you know, but we, we see so many things like that. I, I can have a whole list of this. Um, but another thing by, uh, perhaps I want to say is I was in, in uh, Vicenza and uh, a young girl came in really crunched up like that, really in a bad state. Um, I didn't know what she had, because I was I had already started the, the, the prayers. And uh, um, normally we don't actually pray, we praise God. And as we praise God, the Lord starts healing people, you know. And uh, uh, I, had, I had a word that God is healing scoliosis, you know, the twisted spine. And this girl suddenly straightened up. <laughs> Uh, from this horrible state she was in. Now she's a straight girl. She, uh, she got married and she's, she's got children, etc. It was really an instant miracle, you know. But these things happen all the time, you know. And then we get lots of other healings like shoulders and, and all the sort of thing. But uh, so many, so many things. Another thing which was amazing for me as a doctor, you know, I was in Canberra. And we had a, this healing service, and I, there was an anointing for ears. And I told the people, now put your, your finger in your ear, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Um, about 15 people were healed of the ears, and they came up to testify. One of the ladies there told me, I don't know how I can hear, because she had um, a mastoidectomy. All the inside of the ear had been removed. The ossicles had been removed. And on the altar, I become a doctor. <laughs> I have to check exactly. So I met her close the other year, and she was hearing perfectly from a year that had no ossicles. I don't know what happened, how God, I mean, God heals her, but God heals so many, so many things. Mm -hmm. But he wants to show us his great love for us. He loves you, even as now as you are looking at him, as you are seeing this. this uh, in fact, I sense a, a year has just been opened as I spoke. Hallelujah. But um, let's, let's really continue. Um, there are so many things, so many things. Um, but the glory is all belongs to Jesus. We are many meant to go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Amen. In the kingdom of God in heaven, we pray in our Father, no? thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And there's no sickness in heaven. There's no diabetes in heaven. Yes. There's no uh, cancer in heaven. So Jesus came to show us how his kingdom is in heaven and brought his kingdom down on earth. Amen. Amen. I am really happy with Amen. this. I feel, I feel that the Holy Spirit wants to, to, uh, to heal people right now. So, so John, could, could you start to pray for the sick uh, uh, watching us? Hallelujah. Well, uh, it is not I who heal people. I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit. I believe greatly in the Holy Spirit. I learned a lot from Catherine Kuhlman. Um, it's the Holy Spirit who is the source and the, the actor in healing in the name of Jesus Christ, through the power of his cross. And so, Heavenly Father, on behalf of Jesus, I ask you, be pleased to send your Holy Spirit upon the people watching. Yes. I know, Lord, the pain some people are passing through. Lord, out of your great compassion, Jesus, touch them with your Holy yes. Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, heal those eyes, Lord. Heal that cataract, God, completely for the glory of your name. I ask you, Father, on behalf of Jesus, open the ears of deaf people, Lord, as you have done so many times before. 
Lord, I ask you to heal cancers. I see a person, a, a lady who has a cancer, um, a cyst or a cancer yes. in her breast, in her left breast. In the name of Jesus, we command this cancer to be to disappear. Amen. Be pleased, Holy Spirit, to heal her. Lord, continue healing us as we go through this program. Lord, there are so many things that are passing through my mind. I see a, a person who slipped about five years ago mm. and injured the coccyx, the tailbone, and it hasn't been healed since then. In the name of Jesus, the Lord liberates you and heals you completely. Be healed Jesus. by the power of Jesus. Amen. 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 My friend, if you are watching and you just tune in, we are living this uh, healing conference, <clears throat> present 2020, where it's just not word and uh, slogan on those flyers, but it's real, Jesus is alive, uh, and he's still the healer and he's willing to touch you. As we are with speakers from around the world right now, I invite the speakers to stretch their hands towards the camera. And if you are sick, just put your faith in Jesus. And we are coming together against every sickness, every disease that hurt your body, your spirit or your soul. We take authority and we command this demonic spirit to live, this pain Hallelujah. to live, this sickness to live. And we declare Amen. over your body that through the stripes of Jesus, there is healing right now. Amen. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be free from Amen. every cancer, every Amen. diabetes. I Amen. command the paralyzed Amen. spirit to quit your body. Be healed from Amen. arthritis in the name of Jesus. Every ulcer disappear. Amen. I pray for the no, power of the Holy Ghost the over the head. Yes. Be healed from every Amen. trauma, every Amen. tumor, Amen. every migraine. In Jesus' name, no, be healed key, right now. Key, I command the shoulder all the articulation Amen. to be healed the hips be healed in the name of Jesus Amen. and we Bless even you, believe yes, because Lord God Jesus. is the God oh, of Lord creator Jesus. is our creator we believe right now for creative miracle if you are missing part Amen. or if you need a real miracle of a creative power Glory the creative Amen. power Amen. is the Holy Spirit who is coming right now over you let it be Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There's also another healing, Amen. another healing of a cancer at the back of the nose. The Lord is taking off that cancer. And I curse that cancer on behalf Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Peter, you, Peter do you have Amen. any words? Peter, do you have any words that uh, you see yes. God wants to, wants to hear? Yes. I can add something. There was somebody who had a severe accident some years ago, mm. and I saw many bones were broken, but also other parts of the body destroyed. And some mm. of the bones are okay again, but there are some left who have mm. never been <clears throat> in order. And in the name of Jesus, there I can feel the power of God for you, Hallelujah. that there is a complete Hallelujah. restoration today, now. Now I can already mm. feel the power of God for you. And mm -hmm. the whole body, whole body is now burning like fire. I can feel it in my body. And mm -hmm. the bones come together. I, I can see it. Some bones were not put together in the right way. But there is something Amen. happened, like a move of the bones. And God brings it together. And I can also see that there is a little child. It's, mm -hmm. I think it's a girl. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was uh, in the hand of the mother. And it was taken away. And it's, I don't believe it's a healing miracle, but God brings together the girl. It, it happened years ago. The girl is uh, growing bigger. Even the mother doesn't know whether the girl is still alive. And God is doing something. It would be a very mm -hmm. big miracle that she, he brings back the girl, which is now bigger, older, brings it back to the mother. And then we, it, it will be known everywhere because it's such a miracle. And I bless you. It's Jesus. on the way. God is doing something supernatural. And it's Amen. even, I can see it, it's written in the newspaper. And you will see it and rejoice. It's Hallelujah. something real big. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. If any of you have a, have a word, then uh, there's, there's also, I, I see if I can say it, uh, there's a, a 10, year, 10 or 12 year old boy. Uh, who suffered, who was born with a spine bifida at the back of the spine and couldn't walk and he's on a wheelchair. And this boy is telling his 
parents or whoever is with him is feeling like electricity in his feet. Take off, take off the, the, the paddles of the Libicha and help him to stand. He will stand in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If any of you have a word. With, with problem, respiratory problems, and I see a pain in the nose in this area, and I see the, the Lord healing that person right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Right now. Amen. 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 Denise, do you have a, a word? Do you, do you feel God is moving uh, to uh, somebody specifically? Well, uh, my word is to do what Jesus told you to do, and you will be healed. Now, uh, I mentioned about China. In China, we baptize people. Jesus says to uh, go and preach the gospel. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. And then he says that these signs will follow them. Now, you need, some of you, you you'll get your healing when you begin to obey what Jesus That's told you right. to do. Remember what Mary said, that the way Cana, a wedding in Cana, do what Jesus told you to do. Go and fill these pots. This, let me quickly tell you one testimony. In China, we baptize people, mm -hmm. but because of the persecution, uh, we have to do it usually at midnight when the police are not looking for us, and quite often in the winter time because the police are at home in bed. And uh, <laughs> one time we were in a meeting, and there was uh, ice on the river, okay? It was snow on the ground, and we were baptizing the people, mm -hmm. and I got in the water, and it was amazing. It wasn't cold. It was like a miracle. And there was a 90-year-old woman that was in an accident. She was 20 years old, and she had been paralyzed. Mm -hmm. And we put her in the water and baptized her, and she came up immediately, jumping wow. and walking just like a young woman. Hallelujah. And then there was a young man that had been deaf and born dumb deafened them all his life. He never spoke once in his life. He was 12 years old. We put him in the water and, you know, in the name of Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, hold him down for about 30 seconds to make sure he's really baptized. And he came out and he said in Chinese, which means this water is not cold. Now, he's never spoken in his life again. And now he is speaking complete sentences. Hallelujah. And Praise the thing the is, the water, there's ice on the water. And he's saying, Sully, this Ray Poolung, the water's not cold. <laughs> so just my word is, to, I think some of you know specific thing is you, you need to be baptized in water. You need to do what Jesus said. You need to repent of your sins. You see, this is the way you get healed. Because he said, when you do these things, these signs will follow them that believe. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. P Peter, could, could you tell us also what God is moving, uh, how God is moving and what is he doing in, uh, in Germany? Yes, I can do that. Well, first, it's it's a great joy to be alive at this time. Uh, I see so many, many things happening in churches now that God is re bringing reformation to the church. Mm -hmm. And through the reformation of the church, I see the society has been touched. And what I love very, very much, we see it in our church, but in many hundreds and thousands, I hear from it that there is awareness of the importance of prayer, like we had, we just had a prayer day in Germany for the whole nation for the coronavirus, and uh, between half a million and one million people were part of that big prayer wow, day. Wow. And, and I tell you, you can see it in the scale of the coronavirus from that day on, and the whole infection rate went down like. Crazy. It's wow. really true. I couldn't Praise believe God. it when I Praise saw God. the scale. And so Amen. there is an awareness in the church and in the body of Christ in our nation uh, for the importance of prayer and following by signs and wonders. Amen. And I see many churches are really opening up over, uh, also for the supernatural, not only healing, but also deliverance. You know, in Germany, to be delivered from a demon, you you were not even allowed to talk about that. <laughs> and now, awareness, there is a spiritual world, and we really need to stand together to say, the devil has to flee. We are the sons and the daughters of God. Amen. He has given us a great authority in this time. So it's Amen. a joy to be alive and to see people getting set free and be healed. Just the other day, there was a worker 
in our church, he, he was working, he's, he was not a believer. He is working at a, a gas pipe, something like that. And, you know, we allow the workers to come and get some coffee, our coffee machine. So he came in and I heard him curse and said, oh, so he had so much pain. And he, he told me later, years, he couldn't walk well again because of the hard work he had and he was actually cursing his 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 uh, boss and so on and the whole work and i came and i saw him suffering and i said you know here in our church we believe that god really loves people and he wants to touch each and everyone so i prayed for mm -hmm. him and come on, he was instantly healed at the coffee Amen. machine. Amen. <laughs> and he went with a cup of coffee for his companions. And they were rejoicing because he could move again and the pain had gone. And I believe that's a sign for what's going on just right now in Amen. Europe and in our nation. And I think all over the world. Amen. We're really happy about that. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Again, yeah. Peter, can I ask you to pray for, for the pastors in, in, in Europe? And uh, you, have a, you are a father for, for Europe. I know that you have a, this apostolic anointing. And I think, uh, could you release also the faith for the next step, uh, the faith for the pastors that we're going to go from glory to glory uh, also in the church? Yes, we can do that. <laughs> father, we thank you so much for everything you're doing at the moment in our continent. We thank you what you're doing Amen. all over the earth. And now, Father, thank you that you are installating Amen. something in the hearts of all the people, of your body, of your church, of the Amen. bride of Christ. You're install, it's installing faith in what you are doing in, even yes. in times of need. Your name is the helper in times of need. And Father, Amen. we release now in the power and in the authority of the name of Jesus, Amen. your unction, your faith over your people. Thank you for your strength, Lord, for a spirit of boldness over your sons and daughters. We receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 We can continue to go also after healing. I don't know if any one of you have a word also of what God wants to do now. Um, I, I'm sensing that the Lord is healing a lady in uh, Australia, I feel, who, is suffer who has been suffering from very bad fibromyalgia. Uh, and she's been suffering about five years. And the Lord is just touching her and relieving and healing this problem in her muscles. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, be pleased to mm. touch her for the glory of your name. Amen. We bless you and praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are watching and you still need a healing, be sure to connect to YouTube where you can have private prayer. Also during the whole day, we will have different sessions and teaching regarding healing. But we want to finish this live stream by praying for the nations. Uh, I just had the source of uh, the list of one source where we are uh, sending this signal. There is just from one source, 82 uh, different countries that are watching right now, which is just fantastic. Uh, and we would love to pray for the nations of the world, uh, pray for healing in the nations of the world. Uh, but also I will ask uh, uh, to pray that the Lord may send the harvester, the laborer to the harvest field. Because even if the devil try to release this coronavirus, which I believe it's coming directly, not from China, but it's made in hell. And uh, but the devil forget Amen. that uh, God already provided with the most powerful Amen. antivirus, uh, and his name is Amen. Jesus. Uh, and it's about Jesus Hallelujah. that we want to share and spread this good news uh, to every nation of the world. Uh, and uh, so we pray for France, Singapore, we pray for revival and a great harvest in the States, in Switzerland, in Germany, in United Amen. Kingdom, Amen. Malaysia, Australia, Russia shall be saved, Amen. in Portugal, in Canada, Brazil, Amen. the Netherlands, Amen. Belgium, Amen. South of Africa, Amen. India, the Iranian Island, Amen. Indonesia, Amen. Malta, Amen. Spain, Mexico, the United Emirates, Italy, Taiwan. We pray for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit 
it over Qatar, Argentina, Norway, New Zealand, Romania. We pray for Australia, Ukraine, the Martinique, Philippines, Ivory Coast, Hong Kong, Lebanon, Poland. We pray you may save these different nations and bring your healing power and bring revival to Guadeloupe, Let Letonia, Latvia, Sweden, Finland, Angola, Egypt, Croatia, Ghana, Mauritius Island, Ireland, Thailand, Hungary, Israel, the French Guinea, Senegal, Japan, Colombia, Nigeria, Greece, Kenya, Oman. We pray for Oman, a major breakthrough in Oman. Also to Dubai, we pray, Lord God, for all this nation, Iran, Iraq, in the in the name of Amen. Jesus, uh, visit Amen. Uzbekistan, Amen. Gavan, Bulgaria, Amen. Korea, Peru, Jamaica, Cameroon, Armenia. I believe Armenia is coming on a stage where revival will erupt like never before. Alleluia. So we pray Alleluia. for the rest of the other countries. Amen. It's almost done. Alleluia. Ethiopia, Turkey, Kuwait, Benin, Belarus, Cyprus, Ecuador, Kazakhstan, Amen. Nepal, Haiti, Myanmar, Albania, Congo, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, Madagascar, Uganda. In the name of Jesus, we come in agreement for now pouring of the Holy Spirit over every flesh today. And Dennis, if you agree to pray that the people that were watching, that the Lord may call them to go to the mission field with this power of the Holy Spirit. Mm, bring Lord, peace. We know Lord. that the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Lord, and now we pray for a mighty anointing come upon each and every person listening and even those that are not a part of this conference, O oh Lord, that you will give them a heavenly vision, O oh Lord. Give them a vision of the nation. Amen. Just Amen. mention Amen. all these many 200 or over nations in the Amen. world. The harvest is ripe, O oh Lord. We need labors. We need spirit-filled labors, O oh Lord. People that have the anointing of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that preach the full gospel, O Lord, that will even be willing to lay their life down yes. for the sake of others that they might hear the gospel. Jesus, as you said, if a grain of seed does not die and fall into the ground, it remains alone. But if it falls into the ground, it will produce much seed, much fruit, a great harvest, O Lord. Now, through this great healing conference, let there also come a great missionary outpouring, a Amen. great missionary sending Amen. to the nations, O Lord. We thank you, Lord. Give us visions, as you said you would pour out of your Holy Spirit, and the young people Amen. will have dreams, and the old people will have visions. And now, in the name of Jesus, O Lord, we ask you, we implore Holy Spirit, come and fill Holy Spirit, come. every person listening and let us have a vision. And Lord, use us. And as Isaiah said, Lord, hear my end. Send me, Lord. Let your sending, your calling come upon each and every person Amen. that you've Amen. called in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 We bless you, my friend. We release the peace of God over you, your family, your country as well. Thank you. And we believe that God is with you and he will never forsake you. And if you never gave your life to Amen. Jesus, this is the time to do it. Uh, you can just need to call upon Amen. the name of Jesus and you can do it just with this simple prayer saying, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the yes. Son of God. You died on the cross and you rose again and you are alive today to save my life. I give you my heart, Amen. my whole life, and I ask you to save you. I Thank repent you. of all my sin and I believe in your forgiveness. I believe in you and by faith, I receive your life in Jesus' name. If you want to accept Jesus, go to the website and you will receive a free booklet. Be sure to find a local community where you can share your faith, pray every day, read the Bible. If you don't know where to find a Bible, you can just download for free on most of the iPad or whatever is your tools. And I want also to say for those who want to grow in the miracles and healing service, I have a great news to share with you. We had today more than 70 healing speakers who came together sharing gold nuggets, more than just 20 minutes. And then we have this light talk show and we had amazing people during this week. We had uh, Kenneth Copeland, Francis Chan, Benny Hinn, Cash Luna, Claudio Friedson today. We had Charles Aguinazare and all the speakers who are here with us today and many more. 
But the good news is we don't want just to share our experience, but we want to equip you and to train you. And that's the reason we are launching just after this conference, uh, the Miracles and Healing School Online. It will be every week a lifetime where you will be able to listen to one of these healing speakers. We're going to take one to three sessions. We're going to go deeper about their revelation, not only theological teaching, but also practical way how they develop their healing ministry, how they started in their region miracles and healing service, because we want to help you to do that in your regions. So be sure to register as we have a special offer, Miracles and Healing School. You go to the Healing Dutch uh, ministries.org. You will find all the information. Also, if you want to have all the link regarding this conference, go to register. It's a free registration. May the Lord bless you. Before we quit, I want to encourage all the viewers to exercise generosity because all of these speakers, normally they are on the field. They are preaching, traveling, and today they have been stuck in, the, in their house and we are preaching through Zoom and through these wonderful technical things, but we would love to bless them. And that's the reason I invite you to be generous. Go to our website. Everything that you're going to give, we're going to share that to all the speakers and the worship bands and worshipers. So thanks so much for your generosity and may God bless you. Thanks, my friends, for joining us for this live stream today. It was amazing. The presence of God was there. We bless you. We bless your family and your ministry. Thanks for being part of this healing rally, which is historic. And let's keep in touch, rejoicing to meet together for real in the big stadium and the big harvest field. May the Lord bless you and see you very soon.